From the Ekuwin Gate, it's about 110 kilometers of dirt road to Tora Bay, which was our destination. And our main objectives were to just experience the coast and do a bit of fishing. The Skeleton Coast is basically most of the northern Atlantic coast of Namibia. To get there, we drove from Hentis Bay up to the Uhapmut Gate, which is about 130 kilometers. The road from Hentis Bay to the gate is a salt road. So it's really smooth going, but be careful because when the fog rolls in, it can get wet and slick and dangerous. The two main gates are Ukhabmut Gate, which is the gate that we drove in through, and Springbok Vasad Gate, which is the gate that we drove out of. From the Ukhabmut Gate onwards, it is all dirt road, which is in relatively good condition. It's very dry, very arid, beautiful landscape, and quite a drive from there to Tora Bay. This area is well renowned for its beach fishing. There's some great fishing to be had. And one of the most prolific fishes in the area is the Cape Fur Seal. And this is the Cape Cross Seal Colony on the Skeleton Coast in Namibia. So if you can hear me, over all these seals, as much as 200,000 seals come to shore and they give birth and pups are raised here before they go back out into the ocean. The seals are attracted to this area by the nutrient-rich Benguela current which runs along the coast and brings with it masses of fish. So this is the skeleton coast, sometimes referred to as the land that God made in anger. It is completely sparse, barren, arid, really hot, sun baking down a lot of the time. We are very fortunate to be here on a very cloudy day. But, this is it, the land that God made in anger. And as you drive along, there are shipwrecks and old abandoned rigs as if to emphasize how hostile this environment is. One of the most striking things about the Skeleton Coast is the feeling of absolute remoteness. It's just kilometers and kilometers of dry desert running along the Atlantic seaboard. When you're on the west coast, Clouds of fog can roll in. It's often really windy as well in the daytime, so there's quite a significant wind chill factor, even though the sun's blazing down. So come prepared for that. The thing that has struck us the most is how friendly people have been here. Um, really, really welcoming from the time that we came in. We met all three of our neighboring campsites within a matter of, I don't know, 15 or 20 minutes of arriving at the campsite that we chose. Tora Bay is only open to the public for camping in December and January. And in the spirit of the festive season, my significant other put some lights up around our tent. Check out our campsite review for more on the actual camping area. We've pretty much come to the end of our time here at Tora Bay. We only had two nights here, so really just one full day and then half a day before we've got to head out to the next campsite. But it's really been great and even though we haven't caught any fish, just being on the beach has been fantastic. Just sitting here and watching the waves crash in has been really, really soothing and nice and calm. Hinti's Bar is basically the last place where you can get significant supplies. So factor that into your planning, especially if you need to get a tire, for example, which we had to do. Thank you to sponsors Boston Breweries. Remember to drink responsibly, not for sale to persons under the age of 18.